This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. In 2008, a little film called Kung Fu Panda premiered in China. Beautiful Chinese setting, lovable characters, kick-ass action, and a genuinely well-written story. It knocked everyone's socks off. As the trivia goes, China was so impressed by its representation of Chinese culture, it sparked a debate among netizens and government officials on why hadn't China produced something like this. Except that was not entirely true. The question was posted, but no one was impressed with its cultural representation. Three minutes into the film, you see Poe playing with ninja stars. Ninjas from Japan. This is not a culturally accurate film. No one in China think it is. So, what's the big deal? No one asked this question when Mulan came out, and no one asked this question since. Why did China care so much about Kung Fu Panda and only Kung Fu Panda? It's not a question with a definitive answer, but I do have my interpretation. I think the reason is because this film loves China more than China loves itself. Kung Fu Panda tells the story of Po, a clumsy fat panda with a passion for the kung fu superstars, the Furious Five. Monkey, mantis, crane, viper, tigress. Dude's a simp is what I mean. Bonk. At first glance, the film appeared to have faithfully recreated the Chinese aesthetic, from the red and yellow color palette to the mountainous landscape of Sichuan to the abundance of dragon motifs. Impressive, but. The amount of dragons is also one of the many reasons this film looks Chinese to everyone except to Chinese people. If you take a look at Chinese movies, you quickly realize that dragons are actually pretty rare. Even in the most glamorous of productions, dragon decors are used sparingly. That's because in China, the significance of dragons is beyond decorative. Chinese dragons are sacred beasts. Throughout the late dynastic period. The yellow dragon with five digits represents royalty and is used exclusively by the emperor. Yes, it has to be yellow and has to have five fingers. It's pedantic, but that's the level of respect it demands. This is why you don't see dragons carved into every pillar. Dragons have to be special. Because of this, this film doesn't remind me of China. It reminds me of Chinatown. You see, in 1906, large parts of San Francisco, including Chinatown, were demolished in a major earthquake. Back then, the anti-Chinese sentiment was high in America. This gave the city the perfect excuse to relocate and get rid of the Chinese population. To protect Chinatown, a group of Chinese merchants had to hire white architects to rebuild the neighborhood into a tourist attraction, an exotic locale that appeals to the Western fascination of China. Thus. Dragons, dragons everywhere. Just as Chinatown looks American to Chinese, Kung Fu Panda is aesthetically a Chinese-inspired American film. But this Americanness doesn't stop at their appearance. Circle back to the story for a moment. One day, by accident, Po, the total amateur, is chosen to become the Dragon Warrior, a Kung Fu hero bestowed with the power of the Dragon Scroll. And is destined to defeat the evil Tai Long. It is the classic chosen one narrative in which a hero is thrust into an unfamiliar world, meets a mentor, gathers ally, combats evil. It's a pervasive trope in Hollywood, not so much in China. Another detail that is obviously not Chinese is the philosophy behind the martial arts. The true path to victory is to find your opponent's weakness and make him suffer for it. I'm sure the moment I point it out, it will all become very obvious. 师傅说过，学武只是见体防身，学武威风可言。While no doubt Master Shifu was being cheeky with his statement, the film does seem to glorify strength. And power. Tigers need more ferocity. Monkey, greater speed. Crane, height. Viper, subtlety. It wants to fight. It's what I mean. We need emotional content. It's all about the functions of martial arts. The Furious Five are worshipped for their physicalities and not their enlightenment. 放轻点，学晓功夫就会好勇斗狠，好勇斗狠就会同人结怨，同人结怨好易连命都冇埋。
This difference is especially apparent with Po's training. While he improves, the morality and philosophy of Kung Fu is never brought up. He is trained as an instrument to defeat Tai Long, and that is all. The film is more interested in the badassery and not so much its culture. With all these major differences in aesthetic and philosophy, no one in China is going to think this movie tells a Chinese story. But here's the thing, it's not trying to. As we'll see, the real reason The Furious Five is worshipped is because they are movie stars. Hey you, do you want your own kung fu action figures? Well, Skillshare has a class for that. I'm not joking, with Skillshare you can learn how to 3D print. Check out this class by Lauren Snowick, in which she teaches you how to turn a 2D sketch into a physical object. Plus with classes like character designs and illustrations, no matter the skill level, there is something for you. Less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, Skillshare is incredibly affordable. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership. Even if you have already had a free trial before, you can still take advantage of this offer. So if you have something you want to create, or just have a skill you want to develop, let Skillshare give you a hand and start your creative journey today. After being chosen, Po has to train under the reluctant Master Shifu. Being a complete outsider with no talent for the art, the training yielded no result. Desperate and with the evil Tai Long approaching, in a flash of inspiration, Master Shifu realizes that to train an unorthodox fighter, he must use an unorthodox method. With food. Kung Fu Panda is not a film about Chinese culture in general. It is a love letter to martial arts movies. Movies that the filmmakers grew up watching. From Shaw Brothers, to Jackie Chan, to Steven Chow. Po is a big fan of The Furious Five because the filmmakers are a big fan of Jackie Chan. In other words, Kung Fu Panda is about an American kid growing up admiring Chinese Kung Fu stars. I love Kung Fu! And despite being an outsider with no talent in martial arts, he chooses to make his own Kung Fu movie using unorthodox methods. Animation. Suddenly, everything falls into place. It makes sense that the movie feels Chinese American because it is a story about an American and his experience with Chinese Kung Fu cinema in America. That's why the Chinese setting and philosophy are inaccurate, but the story tropes and references are spot on. For example, the entire gag of a fat guy doing Kung Fu is just Sammo Hung. The gag is also used by Stephen Chow twice. In fact, supposedly Kung Fu Panda started as a spoof of Kung Fu Hustle. The chopstick fight scene is an obvious reference to the fearless hyena. Shifu's look, modeled after Pai Mei, with those signature white eyebrows referencing, impressively, not the Tarantino version, but the OG. The Furious Five is a reference to the Five Animal Style Kung Fu. The rooftop parkour is very similar to the one in Crouching Tiger. There is the mark, and there is the comedic use of props. There is a lot of passion put into this movie. As Chinese filmmaker Lu Chuan has noted, you can feel the sincerity behind this film. And this passion for Kung Fu cinema is precisely what made China went. Why can't we do that? Finally, Po receives the powerful Dragon Scroll. He opens it. It's blank. What? And that is actually another Chinese movie trope called The Wordless Heavenly Book. In Chinese folk religion, the secrets of heaven cannot be written down without severe punishment. So when priests and monks record this forbidden knowledge, they use secret symbols, creating a book without words. Eventually, this concept got incorporated into wuxia media. Whenever there is a secret martial arts menu, chances are it's empty or encoded. Now, if this is a Chinese movie, the empty scroll would likely reference a Chinese trope. I said, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. But nah, it teaches the most cliché of Hollywood lessons. There is no secret ingredient. It's just you. Embrace who you are, which happens to be the lesson China needed. 
Since the 2000s, Chinese films no longer dominated the Asian market. Close by, Korean cinema was on the rise, and internationally, Hollywood films were reaching scales no one else can reach. Throughout the entire decade, we see Chinese cinema trying to relive the past glory over and over again to no avail. The old magic was just gone. It felt like the end of an era. So imagine in the middle of this, a Hollywood movie comes out and professes its love for Chinese martial arts films. It manages to incorporate Chinese elements into a Hollywood plot, and it captures the old magic better than China. It was as if the true lineage of kung fu film continued in America. Kung fu film has been popular with Black Americans since Bruce Lee, and reached the mainstream with Jackie Chan in the 80s and 90s. But even by the time The Matrix came out, Hollywood fight scenes were still chasing after China. But then comes Kung Fu Panda, a movie featuring a Chinese mascot animal and Chinese martial arts, and it's a bigger and better kung fu movie than most Chinese film from the past ten years. It loves Chinese cinema so much they continued its legacy, a legacy that China at the time didn't seem to care enough to continue. This is why China cared so much about Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda loves China more than China loves itself. There is a Chinese proverb for this because there is a Chinese proverb for everything, like rolling upstream. To stop advancing is to be driven back. Is Kung Fu Panda a particularly accurate representation of Chinese culture? No, it isn't. But that doesn't matter. If it is the only good movie about Chinese culture, it will win by default. Over the years in this channel, many viewers have cited Kung Fu Panda as an example of a non-Chinese industry making a good Chinese story. While to these filmgoers, it represents the success of Hollywood filmmakers, to me, it represents the failure of China in voicing itself. It should be obvious that China doesn't use ninja stars. It should be obvious that China doesn't plaster dragons all over the place. But since Chinese cinema kept failing at representing itself, people outside of China have no reference point. Luckily, Chinese animation is doing much better these days. It's gaining traction on the international stage, and it's more confident about its own culture than ever. I guess lesson learned. There is no secret ingredient. The only way to be the best self is to love yourself.